When training a free shaped retrieval, I like to start with the destination and work my way backwards. Here I have a stable and very obvious target platform. Every time the dog puts their forepaws on it, I am rewarding by tossing a treat away from the platform so that they automatically leave the platform, turn around and reset themselves by re-approaching onto the platform. Notice how I am not pointing, commanding or cueing them to get onto the platform. They are automatically turning around, getting onto the platform themselves and being released with a reward. Once their approach is fast and consistent, I am rewarding in position with jackpot rewards. You will notice after every repetition in this video, I jackpot reward by providing at least five treats in quick succession before releasing. I also stand in different positions during the puppy's approach so that they get used to always approaching the platform no matter where I am standing. This will be important later on if you decide to free shape retrieval into different positions. Use motion to introduce the dumbbell and instantly jackpot reward any interest at all. Even if your dog does not pick up the dumbbell but simply makes a look or jolt towards the dumbbell in motion, quickly mark and reward. Once the puppy has a lot of interest in the dumbbell, re-jackpot the platform without the dumbbell. Then introduce the dumbbell and wait. If you've spent enough time concreting the previous steps, the dog should automatically know to pick up the dumbbell and pour target. And again, ensure you are not using hand signals, voice or commands, and make sure that you are waiting silently for the dog to complete the task. Give your dog time to think. Don't get carried away increasing criteria at the beginning. At the start, all I want is to have the dumbbell still in the dog's mouth when they pour target the platform. While the dog is still trying to figure out the whole routine, there may be some instances where they target the platform without the dumbbell or they pick up the dumbbell and act like they don't know where to go, in which case either just wait for them to offer the right behavior and work it out themselves, or go back to the start and restart building value in poor targeting and releasing and reapproaching, or start building value again in the dumbbell pickup. Some dogs may have significantly less troubleshooting resilience than Pablo here, in which case simply keep your sessions super short, super quick, only one or two repetitions a day. The point is to keep the value so high that every time they see a platform and a dumbbell, they instantly think to perform this routine. Don't worry about chewing or chomping on the dumbbell at the start. This will all get weirded out later. The instant you are finished with each session, make sure that you pick up the platform, hide it and hide the dumbbell. To free shape a container deposit, start with your poor target and jackpot reward with their head in the position that they will have their head held when dropping the dumbbell. This mentally pairs the container appearance with a body position for the dog. Again, if there is enough value built up, the dog should automatically reach the container and drop the dumbbell in. Don't worry about poor placement initially, reward for enthusiasm and the poor placement will come later. Notice I am still not pointing, commanding or cueing the dog. I am leaving them to think it through themselves. And every time I jackpot reward, it is with their head in the position that I ideally want them to be placing the article in. Oops, don't forget to pack everything away the instant you're done. When free shaping a lap drop, I use the poor target yet again and jackpot reward with the chin in the position that I want it to be in when they're placing the dumbbell. Just like the platform, just like the box, this is pairing a body position so that the dog sees us in a position, sees the dumbbell and automatically assumes where he's meant to go. Make sure that you are tossing a lot of treats away from you and then jackpot rewarding once they're back in position. This way they are practicing repeated approaches into the correct position. Since I often pat the pup in this position, I'm also avoiding eye contact so the puppy doesn't get confused with the task at hand. Initially, I'm aiming for dumbbell in mouth and feet on platform for reward. Then I progress to wanting the chin in position with the dumbbell in the mouth for the reward. This way I slowly phase out the foot target. Notice how my hands are completely behind my back so the puppy is not distracted or lured. If you are luring your dog, chances are they might drop the dumbbell a lot sooner and they won't finish in the correct position because they'll be emptying their mouth in preparation for a treat. As the repetitions continue, I get a little bit pickier and pickier about how I want the dumbbell dropped on my lap. Make sure that you keep the enthusiasm high. Don't set the criteria too hard too soon. 
Your dog should be always enthusiastic and always immediately rushing towards the dumbbell on site, not avoiding, sniffing around, scratching, sitting, dropping, or doing any other version of ignoring the dumbbell. If they are doing any displacement behaviors, make sure that you go back to square one of building the enthusiasm and making it light and easy again. If it helps you not stare at your dog, set up a mirror behind the dog or beside the dog so that you can watch what they're doing and watch their paw and dumbbell placement without having to actually look down at them. Some dogs might take a very long time with lots of little sessions to pick this up, so just be patient. Once the dog is fully consistent and fully enthusiastic every time they see the dumbbell, progress to having no paw target whatsoever. Practice retrieval from all different directions, including from yeah. behind you. And if you want to add a verbal cue, now is the time. Yeah. Whenever you change the retrieval criteria, always start from the beginning with the foundations, whether that be jackpot rewarding with a head in a container or jackpot rewarding with their feet on a target. Changes in retrieval criteria may include your proximity to the retrieval, your proximity to the deposit, whether you want them to retrieve to a front sit, retrieve to a side sit, take it to another person, drop it on a lap. It's all different criteria. Here you can see that I want Dave to put his two forepaws up on a platform and drop the dumbbell into a hoop. He has never done this before, but he automatically assumes what I want him to do, has a good think about it, and performs with the foundations. Yeah.